Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Sam and I am a part-time reseller on eBay and Poshmark and today I wanted to go over my best and worst sales for 2021. With this being my first year actively reselling on Poshmark and eBay, I have about six months worth of sale versus a whole year. And rather than going over my best and worst sales profit-wise, I wanted to go over my best and worst, in my opinion, <laughs> which can mean different things. So let's hop into it with the best sales. So the first one and the one that I'm most happy with in the six months of selling was on eBay and it was this Smile Direct Club Bright On kit. And the reason that I loved this buy so much was that I picked up 36 of these from a yard sale for $20, which even for a couple is a really great price. So to get 36, it was amazing. And on eBay, you're able to create a multi-quantity listing. So it was super easy to take some pictures and post those up and get some sales. And actually thinking back on it, I must have picked up 37 kits because I also kept one for myself to take pictures of and then to use to try uh, and it worked really well. I used it before my wedding and I thought it was really effective. I ended up selling all 36 in about four months which they were smaller so it didn't take up too too much room in my inventory and so the cost of goods was $20 and the net profit on all 36 was $262.78. And so I was super thrilled with this, this buy and also the sales that I made. I got a lot of great reviews on top of that. So really started to build up my reviews on eBay, which can help me to sell more items in the future as I'll have a better rating. Number two is this Canon Cano Scanner and it is the 9000F Mark II. I I've never heard of this and so this is where looking up comps really comes into play when you are thrifting. If you are not familiar with a type of item, make sure you're looking up comps to see what they're selling for and this was actually an item that my husband found when we were at a local resource and we picked it up for $40.81 after tax and this ended up selling for $299.99, making the total profit on this item $196.47. And it was new in box, it looked to have the original wrapping, so even though I did not test it, I was able to sell it for $300. And I think that this was such a great sale because it's an item that is no longer available to buy. And so if you want one, you have to buy from eBay or another platform like that. And it is for professional photography. And so it had uh, a rail that you could keep your uh, film strips on. So I think it was great and I'm sure the person who purchased it bought it for their photography business. And so I'm happy that I could help supply the equipment that they needed and they supplied me with $196 in profit. My third favorite item was this pair of Tory Burch Fleming Espadrille sandals and the reason I liked this pickup was because it was an item that was purchased from a thrift store. They were basically in brand new condition and so many people had passed them up because they were in one of those plastic zip bags that you would buy a comforter in. And so someone must have donated these shoes along with some others and they were just tossed into that bag. And so I was able to pick them up for 50 cents and they sold for an offer of 
And so my total profit on these was $64.78, which is not a huge amount of profit compared to my sales for the year. I'm sure there were other sales that had a bigger profit. However, it's just fun finding those items that so many other people passed up because they're a little bit buried. My next favorite item was this Lululemon Opre Piece jacket. And the reason that I enjoyed selling this jacket was because it was so quick and easy. It was a fast flip. I bought it from Style Encore, which is a buy sell trade store when they were having a Lululemon event. And so to buy it was really easy. I didn't have to haggle or find anything online. It was quick and easy to buy. And then it sold within, I think, three days. And so I picked this up. It was a higher cost of goods at $65, but it was a really nice jacket and it was a down jacket. So it sold for $140, making the total profit $58.98. But I really enjoyed selling it just because it was so quick and easy. And I am willing to pay a higher cost of goods as long as it is a quick flip. So happy with that one. And on a similar vein, my last favorite sale of the year was the Reformation corset top. As, again, it was a similar type of deal. I did pick it up more towards retail arbitrage. I bought it from The Real Real for $21.82 after tax. And the top sold within a day, I believe, maybe a day or two for $72. And so the profit was $35.78. Again, I've made more profit on other items but I really enjoy selling quick flips, especially one that I bought online so I didn't even have to leave my house. All right, now it's time to face my demons and talk about my bottom five sales of the year. Starting off with a recent sale of this Bosch Power Box. It was one that I picked up with my husband from a yard sale for $50, which was a way too much for a cost of goods on this item. It was so big, so it sat in my inventory for a really long time. What I didn't realize when we picked it up is that it is an older model, and so the music feature of it did not include Bluetooth. And so in order to play music, you would need to either use a CD or radio, or I believe you could attach your phone as long as you had the cord to do it. And I did profit on this. It sold for $75, so, um, after shipping and fees, I was able to net profit $32.14, but it took a really long time to sell, so it was taking up a lot of room in my inventory, and it was difficult to pack up, and you need to have the right type of box. So, not something I'll pick up again if I see it in the future, as long unless it's a really low cost of goods. Similarly, this set of Corning Pyrex Visions Cranberry Pots this was something that I picked up early on when I first started selling on eBay, and I thought they were really cool. I personally wanted to keep one that was in an amber color, but they were so difficult to package up. Being that they are glass, I had to be really careful about how I packed them. I had uh, an item that I sold, a uh, Rachel Ray pot that I sold that had smashed into pieces in shipping. So I was really careful to wrap these. They did end up selling for $59.99 and the cost of goods on these was $15.94. So I did end up profiting $17.31. But for the amount of time and effort that went into packing these so that they wouldn't break in shipping, it was not worth $17.31. So I am tending to stick away now from anything glass unless it is already packaged or something that would be easy to sell and smaller to wrap. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely not going down this line anymore. The next sale that I was a little disappointed in, not because of profit, was these the ceramic mice ornament. And this was an item that I had from my personal um, items. It was not something that I bought to sell and I have learned through this and a couple other items that I've sold that the profit sometimes isn't worth 
selling an item. Sometimes you just want to donate them. I was able to profit $2.84 off of this, but it was stressful because I had sold them right before Christmas and it was right after my honeymoon, so I was trying to scramble to get these shipped. And I had promised the buyer that I was going to send it on the Saturday that I was getting back from my honeymoon. And then my flight got delayed and then I had to stay in a hotel overnight. And so I ended up getting home on Sunday instead of Saturday, meaning that it would have to ship on Monday. And for $2.84, that profit is not worth the stress. It could have also resulted in a negative feedback. So. Sometimes you just need to weigh whether the profit is worth the potential for negative feedback or for a return where you have to pay for shipping. For ornaments, I do like to pack them in boxes that I've purchased off of Amazon, so that also goes into the price. I was never one to play video games growing up. My brother would and I would join him sometimes. We would play Battle Tank and 007 on N64, but I am not overly familiar with how much video game systems are worth and the games that are most popular. And so I did end up picking up this Wii console because it also came with a Super Smash Bros game and ultimately it was profitable. I made money on both the console and the game. However, it the risk of not selling didn't outweigh the profit I made. So I picked it up for $75. It was $80 with the game, and then I split them into two different um, items. The buyer did pay $92, and I think I had free shipping with that. So it ended up being $5.66 in profit, which again, is just not worth the risk of someone maybe not buying it and having it stuck in my inventory or if it had broken in shipment or anything like that. The last buy that I was disappointed with was a large purchase of Funko Pops that I had done. I bought 12 Funko Pops for $39 thinking that they were really popular and that they would be a quick flip. However, what I didn't take into consideration was what Funko Pops I was buying. It was a cost of goods per Funko Pop of $3, which would be good if they were popular characters, but the, the Pops that I had gotten weren't as common characters. So I am still sitting on a bunch of them. Eight have sold, and so I have made $29.95, which means that at the moment I'm down $9.05. I still have four more that I could sell, so I'll probably break even if those sell, but it has been a few months and like I said, they're not really characters I've ever heard of before or they're like second rate characters from popular movies. So I'm not counting on making too much of a profit on that and they do take up room in my inventory. So definitely not a great buy there. I will continue to pick up Funko Pops individually if I find more popular characters or a lower cost of goods, maybe a dollar or less, but it's not something I'm going to seek out in the future. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite pickups were for the year and maybe what your least favorite sales were. I would love to hear, so leave a comment below. And if you liked this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. Let me know that this is the content you like to see. I would love it if you could subscribe. I'm trying to grow my channel for 2022. That is my New Year's resolution. And so I would love it if you could join me and I will catch you on the next one. Mm -hmm.